disease, the infection, the sickness, the illness called gang banging. <laughs> you know, uh, the, the Chicago, let, let's just focus on Chicago. Um, real Chicago hip hop is Twista, Common, Kanye West, you know, Lupe Fiasco. You know, Lupe Fiasco was somebody that the music industry really tried to really, really actually push. You know, there was a time when he was pushed heavily. Lupe was always on, you know, the the video shows in the era where they were phasing them out. You know, uh, Atlantic Records, they made sure he was always promoted on radio, like when he had Kick Push and Superstar and so on and so forth. But of course, the music industry, they want to enslave you and uh, they violate you. Uh, uh, you know, contractually, and they, they want to control your life, and Lupe Fiasco said, I'm not doing this, so he had a struggle with his label, and he parted ways. This industry doesn't want real artists, they don't want real music, they don't want soul, they don't want, they don't want substance, they want nonsense that lowers the frequency of society. When you lower the frequency of an audience called fans, you can cherry pick from them. They'll follow any agenda. If people have a high IQ, a high frequency, if they realize plays and agendas, you can't manipulate them. Music is human psychology. Hit the like button. Share this video. Subscribe to this channel. Music has been something that's been used as a weapon more than ever in the last 20 years since the year 2000 hit more than ever music has been weaponized and no music has been more weaponized than quote unquote hip hop music now what actual hip hop music is is a very specific thing drill music is not hip hop music auto tune is not hip hop music female stripper gold digger that's not hip hop these are vultures of hip hop using elements of rap Aubrey Graham is not a hip hop artist, never has been. He's an R&B singer masquerading as a rapper. People use elements of hip hop but call themselves hip hop. They're not. They are not. When it comes to Chicago hip hop, they always had a hard time in the 90s really breaking through. You had Twista, but he only made it to like a certain point. And then, you know, he had a great career and most people would see him as being like a legend or whatever the case. Obviously, Kanye West, he had his struggles, and then he got to Rockefeller. You should know the story, Kanye West. Common, one of the best MCs. You know, um, I've seen a lot of people who grew up on Common call him the Nas of Chicago, and I could see that. He was tremendous. You know, he bludgeoned Ice Cube. Ice Cube thought Common was like, you know, Eric Benet or something, and easy work. No, Common destroyed Ice Cube. To this day, Mac-10 still jabs him in interviews when they ask about him. He doesn't want to fully give Common credit. Damn, how did Mac-10 get T-Boz? I never understood that one. Oh, I, I love that T-Boz. Boy, I tell you. You know, T-Boz, you know, she jiggles when she walks. Mm. What is this video about? Oh, yeah, a Chief Key for some Lil Dirt or Dirks or whatever. How many times the Reese guy gonna get clapped? I mean, and, and he's arrested too. It's like it's just amazing. The point I'm getting to is Chicago had a hard time really establishing itself in actual hip hop. So no, you have to wait years and years and years, and they get this low frequency noise called drill. And the drill was not always referencing deceased individuals. It became that, and it was a Luciferian soundtrack that these white small head executives were waiting for. And they capitalize on all these people. Look at all the people in the quote-unquote Chicago drill scene. I don't want to even touch on how it spread and infected other cities in, in the world. Because if you lower the if you lower the if you lower the expectation of something, when you lower the standard of something, that makes regular people with no talent say, I could do that. See, when I was a kid in the 90s, in 98. When Rap City had Big Tigger and Big Les, as a kid in 98, they would play a Big Pun video. And then they'd play a Rakim video. Rakim had just made his return. He signed a million dollar deal. He made his return. They would play a Nas video, a Firm video. When those three videos stopped playing, as a kid, I said, wow, these are the best rappers. It was never even a thought that I could be as good as Nas or Big Pun. Okay, fast forward to the last 10, 12 years.
The standard used to be Big Pun, Rakim, Nas. Now the standard is Soldier Boy. The standard is Drill. The standard is Chief Keef. If you listen to Chief Keef, when the song goes off, you could say, hey, I could rap like him. And guess what? You can. That's not a good thing. When you lower the standard of something, that makes regular people with no actual skill say, I could do that. That's the real reason you, why you have a million rappers. Not because the internet exists. The internet has always existed. You have a million rappers because the standard is lower. If the standard was you have to be as good as uh, Benny the Butcher, you have to be as good as J. Cole, you would not have 97% of people trying to rap. You wouldn't. But the standard was lowered. And then every area copies it. In Milwaukee, they you know they, they try to they copy the Chicago drill, you know, DC, you know, Texas, California, Australia, Africa, uh, Great Britain, everywhere. And what has it led to? What human beings say out their mouth has meaning, has power. Human beings, I said this before on this channel, human beings have to deal with spirits. There are dark spirits. There are spirits that are very fruitful. There are good. There are bad. Great. What you say cast a spell and a spirit on you and the people around you. Look at drill music. How many of these, just Chicago, just, just them. How many of Chicago drill people have been deceased or in prison? And that shows you how much of a, of a uh, Luciferian dark nature it is because it's not just the rapper saying the stuff. It's the manager. It's the cousin. It's, it's the, uh, the baby mother. It's the kids. It's the grandmother. Hell, they goldfish probably deceased in, in the damn fish tank. A bunch of princes of darkness. Lupe Fiasco, when he first heard Chief Keith, he said, people like Chief Keith scare me. And not so much scare as far as actual fear. No scare, meaning this person's words can lead to destruction. And what has happened ever since? And the whole irony of it is, you fast forward from 2012 to now, who is the last man that's truly standing? Chief Keef? Who looked like the smartest one? And even saying the smartest one, that's ridiculous because how smart could it be? He popped something off that led to the demise of him and all his quote-unquote opposition see this and the spirit is not well you said this so you got clapped at no the spirit comes back to get you in many ways you might have an overdose you might have a crash not everything is well you you dissed us so they they went and popped you no it comes in different ways and you cannot escape it once you put certain spells on yourself hit the like button now, little Dirk, he's going to go away for at least 20, 25 years to life. And the only way he'll get a shorter sentence is he has to be a snitch and a rat. The same thing he made fun of these other auto-tune drill rappers for doing. So now he's in the Casanova seat. History always repeats itself. He's now repeating the Casanova two times case. History always repeats itself. Sometimes it takes two years. Sometimes it takes Two decades, but history will always repeat itself, just in slightly more remixed ways. But the smartest man standing is Chief Keith, because he got out of Chicago, and he went to a gated community where Vlad TV is his neighbor. And he was so smart, he got out of it, and it still impacted him, because how many people who are friends or affiliates of Chief Keith are also deceased or behind bars? There's a grand lesson here. Did you people get it? With that said, I'm up out of here. XDN wins again. I will eat off all these carcasses because they presented themselves that way. I'm out.